Artifact farming in Genshin Impact sucks. We all know it, this is nothing new. The system isn't unfixable, but the suggestions which you've probably heard up until now won't actually work, or at least not as well as you'd think. But let's take a step back first. So obviously the decision to make artifact farming so tedious and unending was intentional to get players to continue playing the game, but the implementation is so terrible that it has the opposite effect on players like me who are completely unmotivated to even try. Story time, in 1.2 when the Blizzard Strayer artifact set dropped, I farmed every day that patch to get a 5 star cryo damage cup or crit damage hat and never got either. That experience scarred me so much that now I don't even bother farming artifacts for new characters and when needed, I will just steal them off of others. And I'm sure there are others who feel the same way I do. So far, the only direct adjustment we've gotten to the artifact farming process is the introduction of 3 to 1 rerolls through strong boxes. But even if they were to add them to the rest of the artifact sets, that wouldn't do anything about solving the root of the problem. So it turns out that after I finished recording this, they announced during the 3.0 reveal that they are adding artifact strong boxes for the artifact sets that were released up to version 1.2, which is admittedly nice because you can convert sets you don't want into sets you do want, but still, doesn't change the rest of this video. So today, we're going to fully understand what about artifact farming is the root of the problem, and then discuss the pros and cons of some other ways in which it can be fixed to give the system a much healthier gameplay loop. But before we get into it, this video is sponsored by World of Warships. This free-to-play game for PC features intense tactical warfare as you control battleships, destroyers, aircraft carriers, cruisers, or even submarines to take down enemies in massive 12 vs 12 arenas. The over 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and realistic water effects will make you feel like you're right there in the action. With new content and cosmetics releasing every month, there will always be new additions to explore. If you want to play solo, you can, or join up with your friends with the game's division system. If you're a console player, don't worry, as you can also play the World of Warships Legends version, which is faithful to the original game, but optimized for the console gaming experience. You can download World of Warships using the first link in the description to get a special starter pack, and use code BRAVO to get even more free rewards. 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 7 days of premium account time, and one free choice of ship after completing 15 battles. Thank you again to World of Warships for supporting the channel. Upon completing a domain, there are so many cascading levels of RNG that make it very unlikely to get what you want, and essentially impossible to get exactly what you want. To give further context to what I'll be discussing, here's a breakdown of the 7 ways random number generation is a factor in artifact farming. I'm not confident enough to be able to calculate the exact probabilities for every outcome, but this visualization should be enough for you to grasp just how crazy stupid the system is. So for every 20 resin you spend, you are guaranteed at least one 5 star artifact if you are above adventure rank 45, and this will be the starting point. From there, you can get a piece from either of the two artifact sets available in each domain. After that, there are 5 different artifact pieces in each set. Flowers and Feathers always have flat health and attack as their main stats respectively, but Sands, Cups, and Hats each have a multitude of options, and those options are not evenly weighted. Besides the Sands, which are pretty easy to get attack on, specifically getting the generally most desirable main stats are rare. 5% for a specific elemental damage bonus, and 10% for a specific crit stat. And for some reason, Elemental Mastery is even lower than those. So to get that cryo piece I mentioned earlier, assuming even distribution of sets and artifact types, that's a 1 in 200 probability. In other words, it would take on average 100 domain runs to get just one of these, and we're not even at substats yet. This is where it goes from a rough grind to utterly ridiculous. A 5 star artifact is generated with either 3 or 4 subsets on it, each coming from a list of 10 potential stats. A subset cannot be the same as the main set, so in most cases it's 9, but it's not like it matters because again, the distribution is always weighted towards flat HP, attack and defense, and against crit rate and crit damage. Then, each subset has an internal tier value from 1 to 4, which determines its base value and growth per level. And finally, which of the 4 existing subsets gets upgraded every 4 levels on your artifact comes down to luck. 
even though I'm a huge proponent of the idea that your artifacts aren't automatically trashed just because they have a few undesirable substats, the whole system is clearly way too harsh. Now, obviously the most straightforward solution would be to remove layers of RNG by letting players have some form of choice in the outcome before the RNG roll begins. In a very ideal world, most of them would be removed, but we need to stay realistic. So which would be the best to remove if I had to choose one? Choosing the artifact set would seem good from a logistical standpoint, but that only eliminates the first 50-50 and wouldn't really change much. Picking the type of piece would be much better, and is actually what's going to be implemented in Hoyo vs next game, Zenless Zone Zero. Any level deeper than this wouldn't really work since the possible outcomes are then dependent on whatever kind of piece you receive. But even if Genshin did decide to implement choosing the type, I still think it would only be a surface level solution and not fix the core of the issue. At the end of the day, what I find to be the biggest problem about artifact farming isn't just the insanely rare chance of getting a perfect artifact, but rather the fact that I can spend an infinite amount of time farming just to end up not getting anything close to what I want. I strongly believe that players would be much more willing to go through the incredibly repetitive process of farming if it was guaranteed that they'd eventually get the artifacts they desire. This concept is absolutely nothing new. In fact, it's already implemented in Genshin and other areas. For example, the pity system on wishing. We kind of take it for granted nowadays, but not all gacha games even have it, making it possible to spend thousands of dollars without ever receiving the featured character, and others make it less accommodating by having it not carry over from banner to banner. Having a generous pity system not only makes the user experience much better across the board, but it can push players that wouldn't normally spend money to buy primo gems if they know they are guaranteed to get that character they really want, justifying the system's existence even from a business perspective. With weekly bosses, you might get unlucky and not receive the one talent upgrade material you need out of three, but you know that as long as you keep farming weekly bosses, before long you will have enough dream solvent to make it happen yourself. Unlike with artifact farming, these systems give you a clear end goal to work towards. You won't even have to use them if you just happen to get lucky, but if you aren't lucky, it doesn't completely invalidate the time and resources you had just put in. If a system like the one I'm about to describe is added to Genshin Impact, I genuinely believe that it would greatly improve the player experience while also better accomplishing the original goal of getting players to continuously sink time into the game by simply being more intuitive. I have two separate concepts for implementations since there are many possibilities, each with some pros and cons. The first one focuses on artifact main stats. Let's say that at some kind of station, you can break down sands, goblets, or circlets into that artifact type's essence, which represents the broken artifact's main stat. When you have enough of a single stat, you can consume them to change any artifact's main stat to that one. This works because as you farm, you are going to end up getting main stats that are good, but not the specific one you were looking for. In this scenario, and in ones where you have a good main stat but absolutely terrible substats, that artifact won't be completely useless since it can contribute to a better artifact later down the line. And yeah, if the new main stat was one of the substats it would have to be replaced, probably randomly. Essence like this would also incentivize you to upgrade artifacts you normally wouldn't care about due to their main stat, since you could just replace it. I feel like this system is a little bit less useful now than it would have been previously due to the addition of more characters that scale off of stats that used to be considered useless, but it would still make things much easier in terms of being able to get solid 4-piece sets and retains the initial design of certain main stats being more rare without making them impossible to farm. Substats would still for the most part be outside of player control, so this style would appeal more to players that lean on the casual side, since it would greatly increase your chances of getting good artifacts, and only slightly help your odds of getting a great artifact. My second implementation instead focuses on substats. First off, make 5 star artifacts always begin with 4 substats because there's no reason why it shouldn't. Alright, so now for the idea, let's say a new resource is added to domain drops. Using these would allow you to reroll any particular aspect of an artifact's substats. You could reroll a substats tier, reroll what substat is in a slot, and for fully upgraded artifacts, you can reroll the distribution of upgrades. However, by spending either a higher rarity version of this resource or simply spending a greater amount at once, you can guarantee the option you want instead of rerolling. No matter what, you are still at the mercy of RNG, 
but this at least gives you some form of concrete progress towards your goal on every domain run. Being luckier and getting a good artifact at the gate is still rewarded since you don't have to invest as much, and you wouldn't be able to get your ideal artifact without spending a lot of time, but with this your end goal would at least be feasible. This style obviously appeals much more to hardcore players since you need to spend way more investment to get any kind of payout, but it would also make for much more rewarding final outcomes. So yeah, while of course Hoyaverse giving players some initial choice in farming artifacts wouldn't hurt, I can't say it would be enough to motivate me to get back to hitting domains. I really do think artifact farming continues to be the worst aspect of the entire game, and seeing that we're almost 2 years in, it kind of hurts to see it's gone essentially unchanged, but that doesn't mean it can't be changed now. I'm gonna stay hopeful because Hoyaverse has made system adjustments in the past because of player feedback, and yeah, I just really don't want to try my luck for a Dendro Damage Cup when those are released. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys found this video to be interesting or insightful, and as always, thank you for watching.